So guys, today I uh, stepped away from the spring babies a little bit and we're gonna start working on our planter. Uh, we gotta hook up to that, put some tanks on our new Holland tractor and I brought some uh, munchkins with me here to uh, hopefully help me out with that. So here is our sweet corn planter. She is a really old girl with a lot of new technology, but I will talk about that later. But we gotta get batteries in the semi first, check fluids in the semi, start this thing up, move this semi out. All right, Briggs. Super dense. Super dense? What happened? Tank fell over? Yeah. Ah, it should be fine. Easy, Holland, easy. Uh. Yeah! Oh, let's get this battery out of the way. Beautiful. What do you think about the day so far? How's it going? Good. Why is it going good? Alrighty, Holland, you're gonna become my camera girl, okay? Well, I have seemingly uh, forgot that this tractor actually doesn't have a hitch, it just has three points. So, uh, back to uh, running to the other side and grabbing a hitch. Oh. There we go. Perfect. Just gotta lift this guy up. So there's that, and that's the tank for the front of this tractor, but I gotta go grab the fuel pump. Can you shut the door again, Briggs? Thank you. So I think we have plenty of space out here to make this work, but here's our hitch. So we are gonna need a hitch pin, Briggs, which it's a really thin one for the planter. So we'll go look for that, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. I think we're pretty wide open, so we'll have to go bring the tractor around. I think this is raise and lower here. Now that the hydraulics are up, I'm gonna put those down, lock the hydraulics, and then bring the Kubota around, hook that to the front of the Kubota, and that's really easy to maneuver trailers with that. And then I'll try to bring that out and then hook this up to that when it's outside. I don't know why I didn't think of that sooner. That may just work. Oh! Beautiful. You're got an appointment later today so whew, it's getting late now it's crazy windy it's a terrible time to be pressure washing because everything's getting sandy but it's an absolute windstorm out here but I will uh, pick up where I left off tomorrow so we're back out here day two uh, we got the planter behind us as well as the uh, New Holland here uh, we're gonna continue washing these it's pretty crazy yesterday was about 68 degrees and I was washing these really comfortable in long sleeve shirt probably t-shirt too felt really good 
Uh, today it's about 32, 34 degrees right now. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. Should warm up at least a little bit. Uh, but it's definitely gonna be a little chillier washing this thing. But we're gonna get to it so we can pull this thing in the shed. So guys, we're in the Kubota right now. We're on our way to go pick up some more water because our uh, fresh washer out here felt, ran out. So uh, we're heading to the well. I just wanted to show you guys really quick why we plant a cover crop on almost all of our fields and uh, what it looks like when we don't. So right here guys is a good example of what our farm soil is like. You can see it's beach sand complete blow sand it looks like a desert out here and that's why we do a cover crop we almost always plant a base to keep the dust down to break that wind it you can hear probably the wind is just whipping around here and you can see all the dust that gets kicked up by those dust storms look up there it whips all the way across this field just builds up and it's absolutely ridiculous you can see those huge dust clouds Actually, yesterday when the wind was coming from the south, you could not see across that road when you were coming up. It was so dusty. So that's why we always try to get our cover crops in nice and early and try to buffer that out a little bit because otherwise we get tons of this blowing. So, as you can see, we got the front tank on, rear tank on, planters hooked up. All I got to do now is I got to run some of these fertilizer lines back to the planter as well as make a couple electrical connections here, uh, throw the monitors in, get all the hydraulics hooked up, and then pretty much that's all I can do. We have a guy coming out tomorrow that knows way more than me and he's going to set up all our software and stuff like that. I uh, touched on this a little bit ago, but let me just go over our fertilizer setup again. So this big tank back here runs our nitrogen solution. So that just replaces putting any nitrogen, dry nitrogen fertilizer on. And this guy up front here is our liquid. This is organic acids. And both of those go on in furrow. And I will show you the jets that those guys come out of. If you see that right there, that is what the fertilizer comes out of. So everything runs through a metering system and we know exactly how many gallons per acre we're putting down, but that goes directly in furrow right on top of the seed. If for some reason this video gets a lot of attention, I will do a deep down kind of walkthrough of everything that is on this planter. It's definitely really cool. It's a John Deere 7200, it's a 1990s planter, but it has all like 2020 modern day technology on it. It is set up crazily it almost has everything that precision planting has to offer it's just a really really crazy planter it was a really cool build so that's all i got for today i'm just gonna throw those monitors in we're kind of in a crunch we're gonna start planting here saturday so uh i gotta get going thanks for watching guys